Yeah, that's what happens when you don't sound check, baby. Hell yeah. Everyone's a critic. I played this Everyone's at a the critic. music festival through our Everyone's Bluetooth speaker. And everybody, Everyone's oh no, Chris's jewel just died on, on tape. On oh tape. God, I don't have my side piece. Oh damn, dude, a live jewel death. Yeah. Wait, let's take a moment of silence. <sighs> welcome, of welcome, welcome <laughs> to everyone's a critic, to everyone I know. Thank you for being here, folks, if you're here. If you're not, you're not hearing this then. Yeah, fuck you. You so, think you're better than me just because you're not listening? Well, if they're not here, they're going to hear this. That's kind of the point of what we're doing right now. That's true. That's true, yeah, yeah. Like, review, subscribe. So, everyone I know has a thing called Everyone's a Critic. About the same thing, just a fellow sometimes critiquing a certain thing every other week or so, dependent on what we want to do. I am joined this evening in the Troy Castle with my brother. Hey, what up, 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 <laughs> that was fucking defeated sound And my producer Hello That's Andy and Brennan by the way Hi, I'm Andy So uh, yeah, so thanks for, uh, for listening to us This episode of Everyone I, Everyone I Know Everyone is a Critic is brought to you by Audible.com If you want a free audiobook and a trial membership to Audible.com I am fucking losing it today Audible.com Go to audibletrial.com forward slash E-I-K Everyone I Know And you get a free book Or if you want to help us out directly you can go to patreon.com forward slash everyone I know. That's probably the better way if you want to help us out, to be honest. Yeah, dude. We don't like Bezos, but um, he delivers packages really quickly. He really does. So it's like you got to use him, but um, you know how it is. Sometimes it'd be like that. Sometimes it, it is. This episode of EIK is brought to you by New York State Music. New York State's leading music news source. Visit NewYorkStateMusic.com for news on upcoming shows and festivals across New York State. Interviews with and up and coming and established bands, album reviews, award running photography, and a look at what makes New York the best state to listen to music or watch music at. Bands of all genres and sizes <laughs> can contact New York State Music.com to have their content featured on their website free of charge. Am I going to have to fix all that in post? Visit yeah. New York State Music.com for more no, info. Fine. What did I do? Nothing. I read it good. I just read it. It was engaging. It's short, <laughs> short and clipped. Staccato. <laughs> Staccato. Speaking of New York music, and didn't you go to like a like a festival? You're or damn something? right. I did. I went to Disc Jam. And if you're listening to this right now, you better listen in next Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna be letting it out because last year we released the Disc Jam episodes on Friday, and then I realized that these festival kids they go to festivals on the weekend. Yep. So let's give you something to listen to during the week. Uh, we got some interviews coming up with mom and dad. That's Chuck and Neil from Dopapod and Ben Larroquette. That's a great band. You should check them out if you haven't checked them out. Also, I have an interview with Flamingosis, a uh, nightless little beat boy. Uh, and then we have a, an interview with Le Special uh, that was also very good. They're all great episodes. We had a great time. Thank you guys so much for participating with us. Thank you, Adam Strong, for letting me use your RV. Um, you're welcome for the jewel pod. That was my rent. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, if you're new to the podcast every week, our father sends us an email into the cat, uh, into, okay. Into the I'm, cat. Into the, into the cat. I'm going to take a breath. All right, let's go collectively. It's I lost Chris my jewel. fucking lost his jewel. Dude. I lost my jewel. We got a refill coming here. There we go. Okay. We're you good. realize that you Riveting just, you just radio. put that, you just put, you just did it wrong. Jesus you just put it in the dead battery. Oh my God. Okay. Dude, you need a stage hand, my friend. Can we move forward here. Can yeah. Okay. So every every week, our father sends us an email recapping last week with his thoughts and his views. This week, the old man made a pretty long one. Old man against the old man minute, not yeah. the old man essay, not the old man <laughs> podcast. dissertation. Um, we know Father's Day is coming up, but we're gonna cut it down to one of those topics this week. So you're not gonna get the full three. Just the first one, probably the one that's most near and dear to our father. I can't read out loud. Brendan can. Hello, EIK fellas. So, well, let's do it. Topic 111. Being bald. Grandpa straightened my ass out when I was 18 and moping about because I was losing my hair. When he got back from the war in 1945, he was grateful to have his head intact. Hair was not a concern. Yeah. One day he said to me, Stephen, you've got until the end of today to get over this shit, or tomorrow I'll waltz your ass down through the wards at the hospital to show you people with real problems. That worked. 
You failed, however, to mention the benefits of being bald. Allow me to enumerate. Oh, damn. One, when you're not concerned with your looks, you you feel and exude confidence. It's true. Yep. I got you. I'm, I'm ugly and I'm proud. I I'm think, ugly I and think... I'm proud. That's what SpongeBob. Dad doesn't watch SpongeBob. I guess it explains Trump a little bit. <laughs> Two, He's also you don't rich. have to buy hair care products or pay for haircuts. Damn straight. In, inaccurate. Uh, haircuts, yes. Hair care products, still, because I still have dandruff. Even with a bald head. It's fun. Three. It's cocoa butter. You never have a pillow perm and hats don't screw up your looks. It's true. true. Unless Four. you get that, uh, the, the tan mm-hmm. with the hat. In the hot weather, you can take a little whore bath by washing your head and feel like you just walked out of the shower. That is probably one of the biggest perks of being bald. Is being able to go into a sink and just go... Yeah, you're fresh. completely pure. Like Danny DeVito in, uh, in It's Always Sunny when he shaves his entire body and then covers himself in Vaseline. He's pure. He's completely pure. Five, because you don't have gray hair and exfoliate your face and head every day, you look younger. <laughs> it's true. You think? Yeah, no, if you shave your face. That sounds your like face... wishful thinking. More no, than it's true. Else. Dad, dad's a, dad's a thought. <laughs> 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 look that, look that term, term up, dad. Six, all you have to do to look menacing is to wipe the smile from your face. That is accurate. That's you true. also have the responsibility of telling your friends that their hairlines and dicks have a shelf life, and therefore they should live their lives accordingly. It's true. You get to be the yeah. gatekeeper of youth. We we hit, we hit on that last week about yeah. about the Illuminati that shows up and tells you it's time to shave your head. Yeah, dude, the bald guy mafia is gonna come come and get you. Okay, so let's jump into it. We don't have any uh, goofy noises today because Andy's dumb and he's tired. <laughs> he, he worked real hard. I w- how many podcasts do you guys record this weekend? Uh, zero. Zero. I recorded three. Yeah. Okay, and and I and I danced, and I kissed a man. Nice. <laughs> I kissed, I, more on that, I guess, in the episodes. <laughs> this guy used a, a serious accent. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, uh, <laughs> it was for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> a bit on a podcast that you can't see. No, no, no. It was just a bit between. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just a couple of curious boys. Just I just imagine you really drunk, and some guys like you know, it'd be great for your podcast. We made out right now, and you're like, yeah, okay, that makes was, sense. So I'm drunk, but yeah, I kissed him about as much as I kissed my grandmother, which was. She made me do it. Which now you made, now like, you made this weird. Well, okay. Well, that's pretty much what happened. Anyway, he was a guy. He was a stand-up comedian. He did a stand-up set at two a.m. at a music festival, and he thought that that would go well. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a serious XM DJ, and um, so maybe we'll have him on the podcast too. If you know, clout hashtag clout. But oh, um, yeah. we were exchanging information, and his wife or girlfriend was like, "What are you guys doing?" I was like, "Exchanging information." She's like, "Are you guys gonna kiss?" We were like, yeah. She's like, kiss, <laughs> kiss, kiss my husband. <laughs> and so I, I kissed her husband. <laughs> I felt nothing. And, and I'm not trying to say like, you know, it, it, I'm not, it doesn't confirm anything about my sexuality. What I have to say is that he was a hunk and you can't give hunks the satisfaction. Okay. So on he's, everyone's he's shallow. He's a shallow man. So I thought this was I thought this was everyone's a critic, but yeah. apparently just topic number one today is Andy working through his issues. Yeah. <laughs> Long weekend. So Can you hear it in my voice. <laughs> so on everyone's a critic, we take one thing and we critique it. We've done Mac and Cheese, we've done Game of Thrones, and we've done various other things. We did Applebee's. We're back on Applebee's to- is the most comparable to this episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We got to start being nicer to each other. I got an idea for next time. Let's do ice I'll, cream. No, we're not doing ice cream. Ice cream is going to be pa- punishment for me and Chris anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, so who picked the ones we've done so far? Because we got to rotate this or something. Oh, you picked Applebee's. You picked Applebee's. I, stu- I accept my responsibility for that situation. We, 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 we collectively Game of Thrones was Game of selected Thrones. by, well, it was also selected by a fan. Yeah, you Ryan. definitely picked two because you picked the mac and cheese and this yeah. shit show. Okay. Yeah, well, have you picked anything? I say we're doing Adventure Time. We're going to do Adventure okay. Time with Nick Myers. Yeah. I decree. I say it all loud. That now sounds it's gonna happen. Yeah. See, now, what I, what I kind of want to do is just real shitty beer. Real shitty like, beer? Like, 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 oh, I recommended that one. Did you? Was that your idea? Yeah, I said let's do, let's do, and like we could do a contest English where you have to identify which shitty beer it is. Oh, I'm down with that. That sounds like fun. Next, I thought we, next yeah. everyone's a critic. No, That's it's going to be Adventure Time. Well, is Nick going to be up, though? Yeah, he's coming up every other week, baby. Okay, we cool. We can discuss this off air. Yeah, I was going to say. So, everyone a critic. Look One forward time. to our beer episode yeah. at some point. Yes. Where we drink shitty beer and try to identify which shitty beer it is. It's going to be down. fun. Um, all right. So can every- you tell Coors Light? <laughs> I can tell Coors Light. <laughs> I can, Coors Light has yeah. a very distinct taste to it. Um, yeah, I was, think, I was like thinking more like doing uh, uh, like Old English and like still drinking by singles of them. 
Certainly. No. Certainly. You can buy singles of, of, of like Coors Light too. All right, regardless. All right, everyone's a critic. One topic. This week, we are doing the 1994 classic. Classic film. Classic propaganda film. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if that's, you want to discuss that a little bit. I do too. Yeah, it, it, that's a little... Let's start at the okay. beginning, though. What's the name of the film? The name of the film is In the <laughs> Army <laughs> Now. In the no, Army no, Now, no, starring no, 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 Pauly no, no, Shore no, no. and Andy Dick. Andy Dick, who I completely forgot was in this movie. <laughs> I, until he I thought this was a short joint all the way through. When oh. I told uh, my wife we were going to have to watch this movie, her response was, you know Andy Dick's in that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so wait. Okay, wait. So Nicole and, and Brendan watched it together. Did you and Julie watch it together? No, you unfortunately. Flew solo? Yeah, Me uh, and Julie, Olivia watched it together. Yeah. Damn, they should be. <laughs> they're the real heroes of this. They watch yeah, it and no. they don't even get to go yeah, on the podcast. I, don't, I think that out of all the um, significant others in this group, uh, Julie has the least time for our bullshit. <laughs> That's yeah, true. she works at night. <laughs> um, so, so, did you guys watch the shitty quality uh, YouTube? Rip that Fuck I found. No. Yes, that's what I watched. Hell no, yeah. I bought so it. It came with a headache. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> paid for that oh standard God. definition. Okay. No, YouTube. yeah, it came with a headache too. Yep. So I want I want to point out one thing. I do not feel bad watching the rip of that because when I was a kid, I watched that movie probably seventeen fucking times. Oh, Blockbuster yeah. definitely paid yeah, for they, that shit over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah. No. So so <laughs> Paulie Shore is not hurting for my for my three dollars. Do we want to do like a plot summary here? Sure. Why not? Okay. So <laughs> Oh, here I got what we could do. Can we just read the plot summary for Stripes? Yeah, or Stripes, or like Kelly's Heroes, or <laughs> a, or like a shittier. It's uh, fucking Stripes. Th- three uh, Three Kings, sort of. It's it, it's like really close to Stripes, yeah, no. though. It's a bad movie. Um, okay, but it was Paulie a- Shore. <laughs> it, the the, the his movie. Name, his name is, is Bones. Bones. <laughs> <laughs> his first name is Bones. <laughs> What's its last name? Do you know? I, I, I think I wrote it down, it's but it's Bones somewhere. With in, Issa. It's somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere in this madness of scrolling that I, I made while I was watching this fucking film. So, Polly Shore. The movie opens up with Polly Shore is working at a shitty electronics. Polly Shore and Andy Dick and are working at the same Dick place. Are working at the same place called Crazy Boy. Crazy Boys. <laughs> I'm not just a crazy boy. Um, and. They uh, this are is Act One. Act One. They're I, getting. I, call, I gave all the acts names. Oh wow! Well, yeah. what's the name of this one? Uh, act One. A couple of cool dudes working at dead end jobs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so they're working at this uh, uh, electronic store. They're uh, soon to be kicked out. Yes. And then uh, a woman comes in and saves Polly Shore's bacon, and basically buys a big old television from him. <laughs> Twist! What a twist! It's his girlfriend Gabriella, what? the lovely Gabriella. But Bones can't keep his bone in his pants. Do you know who plays the lovely Gabriella? No, who is it? It's a lot of vagina from Austin Powers. Oh, Seriously? good for her. Yeah, good job. Um, but Bones can't keep his bone in his pants, so he tries to fuck her directly behind, in like the <laughs> staff, not even in like the break room, just like in the area behind yeah. the big TV. And uh, Andy Dick. Videotapes him. <laughs> videotapes it, but it was a joke. He didn't think people were going to be able to see. It was a prank, bro. Chill. Uh, it's a prank. I'm just watching you. So fuck your girlfriend. So he sees that a bunch of a bunch of TVs fall down, as you would expect in a 1990s movie. Um, the uh, uh, the um, the stereotypical like owners like and fires them both on the spot. Yeah. One like a key mistake to make in writing a story, especially I think in film, is to have a situation. And then continue to play out that situation, but get the same outcome you were going to five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. And so that's exactly what happens. He's about to get fired from his shitty dead end job. So, and then we watch for ten minutes while he doesn't get fired from his shitty dead end job, and then ultimately just gets fired from his shitty dead end job. He gets wanna, fired sh- from his shitty dead end job for getting laid. So I, I want to just share something what? with you because he's getting laid. Because he's. What, a crazy he's a cra- boy. Because he's a crazy boy. Did you guys notice the fucking pirate sleeves? Oh yeah, dude. The and 19, the hair and the, and, and, and the, the everything. The Weasel. Uh, his, dude. Okay, so his pirate sleeves were out of control. Uh, he he looked so <laughs> like a full on pirate. So I went into this 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 movie, this film, this this masterpiece, 
saying, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna flex on my uh, on my background, my schooling in film. This is what I'm and gonna I'm, use my film degree for. And I'm, this I'm, is I'm the going one. to I'm gonna analyze it, and and I actually got only one point out of it. And then after that, I just fucking my, my head just went. Boop, I'm just gonna write down this stupid shit that I see. Um, the inciting incident happens in the first four minutes of the fucking movie. Oh, they're in the recruiter's office so quick. Like no, no, like four minutes in the the actual like conflict of the, of the movie starts. That normally is reserved about twenty minutes in. So the first act is about ten minutes long. You have normally to, a half an hour. I, I appreciate that though, because the whole point of delaying the inciting incident is to allow you to get to know the characters. <laughs> and we and know. I don't want to get to know these characters. I want to know, like you know what they're about. It's Polly Shore and Andy Dick. They're not. They're not. They're not different from the actors. Okay, so squiggly lines. They get fired. They're just a couple of. Fucking losers. So what? With what long they're, wait, hair. They're a couple of what? L- losers. No. no, what are they? <laughs> Crazy <laughs> boys. So <laughs> with long hair. Ooh, so they, I hate they, that long the, hair. The, the man has put their boot heel down on these two free spirits, and they said no. And they you cannot have a job. They mini go, golfing. Yeah. <laughs> they go, they go mini golfing. And then harass some soldiers <laughs> that are dressed in their uniforms while they're mini golfing. And Pauly Shore is like rubbing his head. Yeah, it's, it's there's a lot of hair based strange. stuff because obviously Pauly Shore at the time was known for his hair, yep. his wit easel. Um, and <laughs> Is that what the wit easel comes from? That's what his hair yeah. I'm pretty sure. Now, I could be wrong. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that it's a violation to be out just like I'm pretty sure in your it uniform, is. no hat on. No hat on, yeah. yeah. I, I think you're, you, you only wear your uniform when you're at work. You, that's like the idea. You, you have I'm, to dress I'm like pretty confident otherwise. that if they're out playing mini golf, they're. I mean, that's already weird. But you're, if you're well, yeah. outside, you're supposed to be wearing your cap. Well, you know, suspend your your, your discount. They're trying to okay? get the military discount, dude. They probably got ice cream yeah, too. I mean, at the true. end of the day, that's a whole five dollars you're saving. Mm. So, so they. Get, that's nineteen ninety nine five dollars. Like Whoa. that's a big deal. So they get I think a little it's 96. Also- <laughs> No, it's ninety four. Ninety four. Oh fuck! Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was ninety four. It was ninety four. Wow. Was right. this movie before Cobain or after Cobain? Cobain died in ninety two, so it was after Cobain. I thought he died in ninety four. No, it was it was, a, it was after Cobain. You were alive because I remember I was on the bus when I heard about it. Really? Yes. Oh, I thought he, I thought there. I thought that I'm I thought Cobain lived to ninety four. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent on that. All right, so they get into a lot of altercation with a couple of servicemen. They say, "Why don't you be a real man and join the army?" Like <laughs> we would never do that. It's like, well, you get paid. Wait, you can get paid to be in the military? Yep. What yep. a revelation, Paulie Sh- or <laughs> Sh- or. So they go, they go to the recruiter's office, and he's like, I don't know about this. Like, well, you'll get, I think I wrote down the, the number, uh, $2,500. Okay. And you get to join the military for that. And like, well, we can make money doing this. What he are died we in 94. 94. Yeah. Okay. So we, we can we So can this make is money. probably what killed him, huh? Yeah. We can make money doing this. So uh, uh, but what's, our, what's our MOS? What are we going to go into? What are we going to do? We're going to be water the, purification the, guys. The least... Shooting of the reserves. Yep. Everyone knows the water purification is the easiest shit in the world. And also, but, his brother's a yeah, pool man. I was going to say, why did he decide to do it? Because his brother was a pool man. His brother's a pool man. So from from there, that's about where the plot ends. Well, then they go to then they go yeah, to, they, they go to, to basic Chad. training. They, they get yelled at. Yeah, they go to Chad. They 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 inevitably get. You know, there's the one dickhead sergeant guy, or there's like five special of them. ops. The guy. special ops guy. Who who try who tries I, to kill Polly Shore yeah, a number of times? But but like because he's special ops, he he can he can disassemble a people. gun. That, yeah. that was like how you knew he was special ops. Yeah, because no one can do that. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's real thin thin thin. Okay, plot. so basically they they take the, the whole premise is that they take this job to make be, money to make money because they think that they'll never get uh dra- you know called into service as the reserves. Only if you're doing water treatment, though. Especially if you're doing water treatment. Okay, I want to address that issue. Water treatment is one of the first things I would think. I'm going to get sent to the fucking boonies. Well, that was the, that that got brought up later on when well, they was, get, when yeah. they get deployed. The, the girls like, do you know why I chose water treatment? Because we're in a desert war and we're going to be the first ones to go. Did you guys watch uh, Orange Is the New Black? No, I don't like that show. Okay, well, the lady who she's Lisa Petty is from Orange Is the New Black. I I made a note. She's a very bad actress. She's all right. She was not good enough. She was also Tank Girl. She was Tank Girl. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, oh, apparently she's she's risen risen above this one. Does role. a lot of voice work, I believe, too. Yeah, she does. I looked it up online. Um. So so he he goes to basic training and then uh, he gets yelled at at one point and the 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 uh, the, the lady sergeant is like blah, 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 grunt 
no, you'll do exactly what I say. say grunt. grunt. And, and he, he goes, uh. and then I she goes, at that, that she one. goes, oh, you're a funny boy, real cutie pie. He's not a funny boy. You know what kind of boy he is? A crazy, crazy boy. boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris has it written in big letters uh, and like a four year old wrote it. Um, yeah, all right. Can I address something right here? Um, uh, Pauly Shore, hot or not? Oh, you could get it. You think so? Oh, yeah. He he alludes to, to, to how much sex he's had. Like, there's the one line, uh, I've seen a camel toe, but never on a camel before. I don't think that we're qualified for this. Nicole! <laughs> Olivia said he's hot. That's why. That's the reason why I bring yeah, this up. No, I, I think you know, he's tight. I think for the time, for 1990, if I saw that crazy motherfucker walking around now, I don't think I'd be that into it. That hair is ridiculous. It's completely out of context. Well, does he get to shave, though? I know. I understand that he can change his hair, but I'm just saying the easel, like the full shore, is just not right for this, this time period. What about the scene where, okay, so they, they go to basic training, they finish basic training, then they go and they're having the party at yeah. his place, and he's like, Isaac, like, cock oh. blocked by war. That's he's, act two. Right. Cock <laughs> blocked by war. Exactly. So he... Well, uh, three, I guess? No, that's still two. I don't know. It, the movie, it, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't follow it's any re- fucking Chris, structure. Chris, it's a recruitment film. I, d- I don't think this so. This is a recruitment film. Yes, it is. Uh, hmm. Can we, should, we, should we discuss this? How do you feel about this, Brendan? Is it propaganda... Do- Oh, wait, wait, Nicole's here. Pauly Shore, hot or not? He could get it, right? Don't influence her. Uh, or, or uh, You look like you want to say yes, but you're embarrassed. You Don't be embarrassed. Olivia said he's hot, too. I mean, like, young Pauly Shore, maybe. Yeah, like, Pauly yeah, Shore. Right Shore now. Yeah, in the army now, Pauly Shore. In the army Shore. now, Pauly Shore. The, the, the yeah, film yeah. you watched last night. Like buff for it. It's true. He is pretty buff in that Just movie. say yes if you want to say yes. <laughs> Welcome to everyone I know. Everyone I bamboozle. <laughs> so he's not terrible. Okay. Okay. So not no. It. What about Andy not, Dick? Yes. Absolutely not. <laughs> no Andy trash. Dick. Yeah. Absolute trash. Okay. The, the one scene where Andy Dick was naked in the sand, I wrote something down. It was like one of the last things I wrote before I just completely gave up uh, taking notes. I think I fell asleep at that part. Uh, Andy Dick's dick. Nice. And then I'm like, I'm wow, solid. Wow, good job. Done That's with this. solid. <laughs> you want to see my Andy dick? I bet that he uses that one. <laughs> my, my notes since then. Uncle Tony. <laughs> Third act. What, Baba Ganoush. That, is that the one that the, the general that yes. was supposed to be like Gaddafi yeah. or whatever? Yeah, I'm just like, Uncle Tony. Okay, so, Brendan. Toad? Do you see this film oh, look, as a propaganda film? Is it a recruitment? I think yes, that is, is giving it too much credit. Here's I, the thing. The military only allows the use of military assets mm-hmm. in film if uh, the filmmakers, the studio, goes along with the things that they it. want. They have to sign off on everything. It's not even just sign off. They get a, pr- a pretty wide latitude in making sure that it yeah. it portrays the military. The, the, in the, so they, they, they get like the military has a lot more control over the film, the, industry. The film industry than you think. Because mm-hmm. a lot of movies that you wouldn't think have to use military assets, The Dark Knight Returns is one of them. Um, that, what are they using that like helicopters like or? all that shit and like a lot of the infrastructure stuff they need to use is military so that's why you'll see in a lot of movies a lot of big budget movies special thanks to our armed services and all that stuff thanks because, to troops because yeah. because they were actually involved in the movie which means they they do have pull over the plot of the here's how you can tell this movie is propaganda how many times did they say one weekend a month two weeks a year right oh, yeah. or be all you can 11, be thousand times the only you know the only thing they said more than that what? Crazy, Crazy boys. <laughs> every, I don't like know why times. I'm falling for this every fucking time. I'm dumb as hell. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty clearly a like I mean, like most films like this are or at least mildly. Yeah, I think yeah. that the, the overall plot of the movie is look at this dipshit loser. He loses his job yeah. because he's trying to fuck his girlfriend. Now he's work. a hero because he joined he's the hero. reserves and he joined and, the and, reserves. And, but, you, you, you're neglecting the biggest part. He gets done. He gets out of the reserves, and he has his dream job. He owns his own business, right? Which is which you could do too tru- if, if you truly. Okay, so it's propaganda. Truly, an insane premise yeah. that you're going to leave the military and be rich. Yeah, you're gonna be rich and have a nice racist yeah. electronic store. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the camel. Yeah, how do? Camel. Okay, here's a question for you, Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you feel about the portrayal of the Middle East in this movie? Um, I thought it went. They went to Chad. They went to Chad, but there was a lot of camel. It, it and, was. It was. It was a very uh, um, uh, stereotypical, like like Arab 
portrayal. It's it's whatever. I thought it was not technically the Middle East. But... Okay, well, okay, well, it get, hey. so so excuse excuse me then. I'm sorry. Here's what I have to say about it. I think that as far as movies of this time frame go, mm-hmm. it was okay. They had actual brown people. Yep, playing the Arabs. Yep. And they didn't, it seemed like they were speaking a real language and they weren't just going boggity boggity. Although Paulie Shore on a couple occasions did go boggity boggity. He did go beep bop boop bop. <laughs> I mean, there was one scene where he was selling them the, the truck, like yep. that they, they sold uh, some truck that they got from the military or they stole from, from the, um, the Libyans or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, oh, and you can, you know, it's got a stereo, you can play your, yeah, 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 yeah. and so that was a little. Um, so well, I, I, I want to like, I think probably one of my favorite interactions between Pauly Shore and uh, and Andy Dick was in that scene when he says, oh, like, you can't give him, give, he's trying to give him his watch with the with the truck because that's going to sweeten the deal, right? A fucking wrist watch because because it's an Arab merchant, yeah, yeah. and you have to <laughs> just. Got it. He likes. No, he knows the deal. They they, they they like watches and sunglasses. But um, just like our Uncle Tony. <laughs> hey, Uncle Tony. Uh, <laughs> so and then then he says the, the the line. Well, you know, it's got the phases of the moon and, and, and a compass on it. And and then Paul Shore's like, it had a compass on it. And then Andy Dick gave nothing back. He's like, yeah, no, that, that had a compass. I'm done with this fucking movie. Can I get the fuck out of the desert right now? I'd like to do cocaine now, <laughs> yeah, please. Like, <laughs> I'm coming down really fucking hard right now. Yeah, I don't know. The um, I mean, I think that it's a very 80s and 90s portrayal oh, yeah. of the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. Like, you no. don't well, see. Post 9 11, you see very different. Storm like, style. take a movie, like another movie that is fairly silly, but not quite as silly. Three Kings? Three Kings. The portrayal is very different. Fucking movies. Iron Man. Yep. So the they portray everyone's um, a terrorist in a yep. in a cave. It's in not Iron even Man. just. I mean, in this, they're portrayed as like militants, right? But, mm. but they're, they're all I, driving Toyotas vis a vis the Toyota role yeah. war, which you could tell us more about because I, I just saw it on Wikipedia. Ooh, the old stereotype is um, from like, that you would see in like eighties and nineties movies is very um, that these are people who are very. Um, like almost primitive. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a very like um, West centric kind of thing that doesn't really focus a it's, lot on like religion or anything like that. It, it's, it's just it's focused like, on like the, the portrayal of like Native American. Yeah, it's and, very similar um, to how you imagine that portrayal. I don't imagine that it's that distinct from the way you would see Sub-Saharan Africans really yep. portrayed. Sure. Um, this kind of primitivist view mm-hmm. of the way that they are. Well, they're but they're good hagglers and they're right. good at like they've you got know. old tech. They've got a camel to sell yeah. you that kind of shit. Yeah. And um, if you go then like two thousand, you start to see stuff like Three Kings. The yep. portrayals get all at once more nuanced, but not less racist overall. Although Three Kings yeah. is subversive in, in that well, way. The, the, the idea, Three Kings was was made to be a subversive. Yes, so th- yeah. Like, so Three Kings is a little bit of an exception. But if you're talking about movies movie. that are of similar. Um, level of sophistication as like in the army now. Right. You know, you're you're going to see portrayals yeah. that are substantially more um they're going to be darker. Certainly. Oh yeah, well cuz cuz they, they they went from kind of a, a goofy antagonist to actual villains. Yes, that's that's a good way they, to put it. They, they went they went from like the the look at these silly people. Yeah, it's and, like these this like uh, kind of like goofball archetype. Like okay, well they, they kind of like trip trip on a banana peel type shit. Right, they've to, got they've got a hoopty uh, yes. uh, pickup truck with a with a machine gun on the back. Yeah, well like, think about when in the army now came out. What was the most recent conflict? Desert Storm. Desert Storm and Desert Storm at the time was looked at as like look at how quickly we rolled over these morons. Right. right exactly. So the the. The kind of um, popular sentiment you're going to see, like the way that people are generally going to view those things is like, yeah, those primitives that like our weapons just make a joke out yeah, of. Right. And that is kind of how it's portrayed, even it, toward the end of the movie, when they like take out that whole base. They basically just sit there under gunfire. Right. Like They're by like 30 just, guys. And they right. end up taking out the whole base because like they just well, they, fire they the helicopters, missile. but the helicopter, helicopters well, they came in like, in, yeah. like saved the day. Well, they don't. They end up blowing it up themselves, right? They yeah. just. They, oh yeah, that's right. They yeah. right. They, they, I was checked out by that. He launches point, a missile, Chris. Chris, let me refresh your memory. Okay. They told him not to point the missile the oh, wrong way and during that awesome booking. joke that they 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 set up in the first Chekhov's second cast or what a shoulder mounted rather? Uh, rocket launcher yeah. was. Is that a tow missile? I don't know what kind of missile. It I was. think that was a law. A law. Oh yeah, right, yeah. right. Um, laser assisted weapon. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that's what law stands for. 
it stands for. Brush it's, teeth I think that. So anyway, so he fires it backwards, then he fires it forward, yeah. and he just hits somewhere in the base, and then the whole fucking thing blows up. I think that um, this is something I've I've uh, talked about before. I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast. Is let's say you uh, Back to the Future was made today. It would not just be I don't know. I got this stuff from some Libyans, and they're pissed at me. Right. That would if you made that movie today, and you were going, the Libyan for would the have Libyan. a name. Oh yeah. The, he would scream Alu Akbar before he shoots at yep, people. Right. It would it he'd would be come a, with he'd be a mustache twisting villain. Yeah, he wouldn't be this kind of like almost like because in in Back to the Future it's a faceless yep. threat. Right. Really. They're all they're all interchangeable. Yeah. Even the general they don't even name. They're just like you're in a military base. Yeah. In, you're in prison in a military base. And here here's here's our plan to to, to attack the Americans. I'm, right. I'm just gonna well, tell you. Well, look, the American best. television. The same bit from Three Kings. I'm just realizing <laughs> yeah. where they watch the fucking oh, yeah, war on the news and they're like, "You're gonna attack tomorrow." American television. Well, it's the same like primitive. Like when you're looking at people as primitive like that, the people are interchangeable. Yeah. Right. Nobody. But when has you a, make them uh, villains, sinister... they have to have character. Right. Yeah. So you they can't just be like I don't know whatever Muslim dude that shoots people. Now they have to. It's got to be complicated. Now they have to. They have to have the qualities that make them evil, right? And that's that's a very different thing. And it's one of the reasons that I don't know that you could make um, since the the tensions around those things have only grown since nine eleven. Right. I don't even know if you could get away with something like Three Kings in two thousand nineteen. You probably without so could. Much more controversy. You, you you probably wouldn't be able to get away with the lightheartedness of it. Um, of Three Kings? Of oh, Three Kings, nah, no, probably not. But this is a pretty dark movie. Yeah, Once but the, majority, the majority of the movie is is a comedy, though. That's true. Like, the first the, the first two-thirds of the movie is a comedy. And then it, it turns in, it turns into the dark stuff where, where Marky Mark gets shot. And, right, they, they, <laughs> they, pour, they pour oil down his throat yeah, and shit. Yeah. My good friend. Or what do you call him? My, my friend. My friend. Oh, no, my main man. My main man. My main man. Main man. Um... But but even but even with that, like the, the ending of it was very very fantastical. We should have just fucking watch Three Kings. I would have watched um, Three Kings. I I would like to have fun for one of these episodes. Yeah. We could have watched Stripes. It's the it's if this movie was funny. Yeah. So guess what, guys? Uh, mm. The they stole so many jokes and so many like. Do they have a grenade? I've never seen Stripes. Do, do they have the grenade gag in so that? I don't where, know. Where you I drop can't. The, Dude, let me tell you. The, do you know what the, the plot of Stripes is? Pin? It's a down on his luck guy who loses his job, signs up for the army. And ends up getting thrown into a conflict he never thought he would end up being thrown into. Kind of sounds like uh, in the army now. The only difference is it took place during the Cold War, so you know it's about uh, ends up being about the Soviet threat. But does he pretend? Does he pretend to be gay with Andy Dick to get out of service? Oh yeah, that was. What do you guys think about the the gay panic in in that movie? Because this is like deep in the nineties gay panic. Yeah, Yeah. that's like Friends level gay panic. Yeah, I I thought it was. It was Friends, Friends Level Gay Panic is yeah. cringy. Yeah. Nicole recently watched uh, Friends all the way through. She had never watched it. Yeah. It's it's real. It, Ross is rough, man. <laughs> that dude is that dude is problematic. <laughs> he's got he's some canceled. Right? He's Ross canceled. is canceled. Yeah. Um okay, so wait, in stripes, do they have the grenade gag where you drop the grenade and throw the pin? I fucking assume. I'm, I'm sure th- th- I'm sure it's a, in there. It's such like a like a like a just a just a throwaway joke. And then the like I'm not gonna hit you because I'm because you're a girl thing when like in the beginning there. And, oh yeah. Uh, and then she oh, beats him up. Here's and, another here's another thing that didn't age well. All the women in uh that movie are sexy ladies, which is not a problem. But the fact that if you look at their outfit, their uniforms, they're all cinched in oh, yeah. Yeah, at no. the waist and stuff. Like the drill sergeant is like sexy and like uh uh the uh, Lisa Petty is like sexy. I forget what's her name. Christine in the movie. I, I, couldn't, I, I think couldn't it's Christine. I, I think they're calling Chris. Dude, when 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 all women were super thin for no fucking reason. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> I still like. Uh, okay, here's a question: Tear your head off and spit down your neck. Is that from this movie? No, no, that's that's, that's uh that's Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, okay, that's okay. one of the insults that uh, Arlie Army hurls at. Okay, I'll tear off your head and shit down your neck. Yeah. Okay, well that's the funny thing about this movie is it is full full of metatextual references to other war movies. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was a it was a it was a, a, a ahead of its time with the commentary. No, no, Full Metal Jacket is not a movie the military would allow to get made yeah, today. No. Absolutely. We actually we got in a small argument at work because it was uh, what's better, Full Metal Jacket or uh, Saving Private Ryan. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, that's a better movie. Yeah, I know. Uh, that was saving, my argument. Saving Private Ryan is just depicting war as good and awesome. Yeah. Full Although Metal they, there are there is some stuff in Saving Private Ryan that's well, yeah. really good. 
for even it, even his critique of war, but it, it's uh yeah, there's there's no critique there. It's just it, the it, sequence when they um when they shoot the uh the two guys that come at them like yep. waving their arms and saying like something yep. in a foreign language. Right. Well, look, I have washed my hands for dinner. Right, right. That's what they say afterwards. Like, oh, w- w- what did they say? Look, we washed for dinner. But yeah. that wasn't. But that but, wasn't played as. But if a you war tran- crime, if that, you, yeah. But if you translate what they said, it said we were captured and forced to fight. Please take us. Right. It's something of course. along those yeah. lines. But it wasn't portrayed as a war crime it was portrayed as like "Ah, these guys are cool look at the jokes they make while they shoot people (laughs) (laughs) i think probably one of the best like uh but full metal jacket's better yeah no it is um i think one of the best uh shows the bleakness for um and how it's all a joke that's why they they sing mickey mouse at the end of it yeah and also depicting that these are kids yep yep uh it's stanley kubrick we miss you um but Oh, I think one of I the- miss you too, Chris. <laughs> Is that I'm was Stanley Stan- Kubrick voice? Stanley, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. That, that was the up. least Stanley Kubrick <laughs> voice I've ever heard. I'm from Brooklyn, aren't I? <laughs> He's from Brooklyn, right? That's Stanley I, Kubrick. I, 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 I couldn't tell you. He, he loves to play chess, and he loves London, but he's from Brooklyn. Hi, I th- Chris. I think I'm your I think, hero, I Stanley think, Kubrick. I'm I, not gonna stop until you acknowledge me. Hello, Stanley. <laughs> Hi. Uh, uh, so I think one of the did you th- like 2001? <laughs> It's a little long. It was oh. Like, oh, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> what do you think of fucking bad me? First of all, he's from the Bronx. Oh, well, let me adjust my accent a little bit. <laughs> hey, I'm Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> um, I think one of the best recent war movies that was an actual pretty good critique of war, not that I've ever been in conflict, and I really have no... Oh, I've, I'm in war every day, dude. <laughs> no place to speak to this, was uh, Fury. Fury was good. Fury Up was until the oh, Fury? Lot. Yeah, fur. Fur, furry dude. Oh, oh, dude, those tits on that raccoon. Oh boy. <laughs> um, up until the the last scene where it turned into an action movie, which really pissed me off. Yeah, the the ending of Fury was terrible. It was compared to the rest of the movie, it was absolutely horrible. But there are some scenes in there where you're like, "Ooh, we." The first like five minutes, they kill a kid. Yeah, right on screen. Just shoot him. Yeah, you got to kill children. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Fury's a good movie. Go watch it. Um. Okay. So, uh, well, let's how start- do how do we rate this in relation to other Pauly Shore movies? Okay, uh, the, from the you know from the crowning jewels of the '90s. Poly so we're talking movies. like Waterworld, Encino Man, Encino Man. He's in Waterworld. He's not in Waterworld. That's Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser was in this movie. Brendan Fraser's in Waterworld. Brendan Fraser's not in Waterworld. I don't Waterworld. fucking care anymore. Okay. That's okay. Kevin Costner. You're Kevin yeah. Costner. I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brendan Fraser was in this movie. Where was he in this movie? He was in the movie for five seconds. Okay. He walks. It's right when they're in the mess hall when they okay. meet the special forces guy. Okay. And Brendan Fraser walks through and he's like, "Hey!" <laughs> and then he walks off. Go see the mummy. <laughs> he's like, hey, "The mummy's I'll coming out." Encino man. <laughs> So is this better or worse than Encino Man? Um, I can't remember Encino Man. So. Well, seen. you're a lucky man then, because yeah. it's a horrible movie. Um, I would say this this is pretty bad, but I think that possibly better than Biodome. To me, this is Biodome the poly- produced by Steve Bannon. Damn, you're kidding! I am not kidding. <laughs> wow. It's, a, it's the best thing he's ever done. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> nope. Next to killing himself. He's going to do that soon. <laughs> <laughs> that or drink himself to an early grave. It's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> um, this, to me, is the Pauly Shore movie. This is when I think yeah. of Pauly Shore, I think of In the Army now. Is there a be- is there a more iconic Pauly Shore yeah, movie? Yeah, no, I think it's Son-in-Law. What? Son-in-Law? Yeah. Son-in-law. Was it, wait, wasn't he jur- a juror in one, too? Or is that Chris Kattan? <laughs> Fuck. We should watch the Chris Kattan the, movies. The only person more worthless than Pauly Shore. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, you although know, that Polish Shore is dead shit was hilarious. Yeah, it was pretty oh, funny. Yeah. I heard that was good. I didn't yeah. see it. Um, okay, well let's let's um, let we you know who we haven't acknowledged yet is David Allen Greer. David Allen Greer is all over this movie. Yeah, and he's the guy he's teaching everyone to floss. Which oh, he's yeah. very funny. He's a dentist and he's afraid. <laughs> He's very spooked. He's very he's very scared of war, but he's gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. That didn't really. That didn't really. He was like uh, attract finishing, for me. Wait, why did he have to go? He was it? finishing his degree as a like as, dentist, as a dentist or something. And so he then, to pay why for it? I don't think that. I didn't say he had to become a man. That's why he did it. Oh yeah, he was afraid yeah. of something, and he was like, "I'm gonna go to war. Oh, I'm, a, I'm gonna be a manly man. <sighs> I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna teach these." Uh, uh, Chadians to to floss. That's all I did all the fucking the it, entire fucking. Movie. But it, it gained him goodwill when they when they sold the camels. Um. <laughs> so, uh, question. Always got to be fucking camels. Hey, listen, I've seen. Have you ever seen a camel up close? 
Yes. They're very big. They are. They're way bigger than you think. But they're such so, a they're such a lazy punchline. So the the one scene where they get the camel and the camel kind of chews on Polly Shore's head for a second. Did yeah. you guys pick up on that? I think he was actually scared. I would be. Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? The camel's like, blah, 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 blah. She's like, I think he likes you. Oh, how bad was the ADR throughout the entire movie? You guys oh, probably so didn't notice because you're watching bad. it in YouTube quality, but I watched it in standard definition. You're welcome, YouTube uh, video. I rented how it. How much was it? It was three bucks. Jesus Christ. It's three bucks, dude. It's three bucks. It was worth much. it. Dude, no, it's three bucks because I'm dedicated to this podcast and I'm here to watch it in full state. What if there was something that you guys missed? What if you missed some complicated... Then we new- would be better off than yeah, you. Seriously. Well, whatever, dude. Every part of this movie that we missed was, is a was gift. Was a gift. Your anger is a gift. Rage Against the Machines. Um, Tom Morello played a uh, random terrorist in a movie. Which was, it, was it in the armor now? Iron Man. Where was He's it? one of the kidnappers that has... Really? Tony. Really? Very yep. cool. Did not know that. Um, okay, so what are your favorite like gags in this movie? Uh, okay, so I'm going to go go with the classic from when I was a kid. My favorite line was, uh, he's like, how does it feel to be dead? And then how's Paul Shore it? goes, how does it feel to be a dick? Dick. Yeah, that and, was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I liked... Uh, I like most of the interaction between Polly Shore and the female drill instructor. Yes, so one drill sergeant, two drill sergeant, three drill sergeant. It's, it's like there was a fucking like a metronome on this movie. Every fifteen minutes, he has goofy to do push ups. He's got to do push ups. What is it? Not even that. It's, he's got to say something goofy or do something goofy. Yes, it's a slapstick d- film. I guess. <laughs> one drill sergeant, two drill, drill sergeant, sergeant, three drill sergeant. Oh, and we pulls out the crazy boys. Cra- That's yeah, what when, I was gonna say. When when they're when they're selling the truck, yeah, the famous the truck truck, truck for camels. One eight hundred trucks for camels or kids or whatever. Did he did he say that he was a crazy boy after he had his his own place? No, they're not crazy boys anymore. It's now I forget the name of the place. It was like Oasis. Yeah, it was like Oasis, Oasis. Stereo or something like that. And they yeah. have the the camel on there because racism. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, Brendan, you know what? You studied Middle, Middle Eastern uh, uh, history. Not the Middle East, but okay. God damn it. Do you know about this co- conflict? It is kind of real, right? I have no idea. It did not take place in the Middle East because the chat is not in Okay, let's recast this movie with different people. <laughs> okay. No, let's do... Mo- we want to do modern day? I can tell you that this movie was very unrealistic <laughs> to what combat would look like in... What's in a, a Scud in a, missile? In a, like, Sahara it's a big country. old missile. Yeah, but what's a, what is it? It's a big old missile. It's a big old missile. I think it's a biological missile, right? No, it's not biological. You can put, like, payloads it's in not, it. No. It's, it's not a biological missile? No. Because that would be very problematic if they shot a fucking law at it and then it just blew up next to them no. and I'll be fucking dead. All right. Recast it with modern Recast. actors. Modern actors. Chris Who? Pratt. Is Polly is Polly Shore? Chris Pratt, Polly Shore. Okay. I don't think I don't think so. I don't know, man. He's not annoying enough. You're right. Chris Pratt is Brendan Fraser in this. He's in it for five seconds. He goes, "What's up?" And then he's, <laughs> yeah, he gets a paycheck. No, I think we least. gotta kind of think harder uh, who, about this. Who, who, who is the Shore? Can, maybe who should, is today's Polly Shore? Eric Andre. Eric Andre. Eric Andre. Done. Wait, are yeah. we trying to make this a good movie? Yeah, let's make this a good movie. Okay, Eric Andre. Eric Andre is yeah. Polly Short. Eric Andre. Where, where does where does Eric Andre work though before he gets before he gets? He works at a fucking dildo factory. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, he does. And he get, and no, he, oh, no, no, he, he works at a loop factory. No, and he's he, slipping all over the place. He all hosts the time. a public access show. <laughs> um, so then, who's his best buddy? Hannibal Burris. <laughs> <Hannibal Burris. laughs> Not Hannibal Burris. It can't be Hannibal Burris. Who's the Andy uh, Dick character? Andy Dick. Andy, <laughs> just Andy, Andy, Andy Dick, Dick, but he's just been through rehab more yeah, times. Yeah. Um, hasn't killed anybody else's wife recently. Oh fuck yeah, he killed uh, what's his face? His wife, uh, SNL guy. Or, no, he Wait, he, he got a um, he got Phil Hartman's wife back on drugs. Oh, yeah, Jesus and then she stabbed. Christ. And that's him how to she death. ended up killing Phil Hartman. Yeah. Okay. It got dark quick. Yeah. Um, right, so, well, so who's the, the best? Thir- who's, welcome to the third act of Three Kings. Who's, it's dark who's, now. <laughs> who's the best buddy? So it, does it have to be a little easily guy like like not Dick, just, the, or just like just somebody who's not good at work? Because it could be Adam Adam Devine of Workaholics. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Mm, he's too masked though, dude. He's too masculine. I kind of like Bill Hader for the dentist who's there and is afraid of everything. Yes. Yes, I'm down with that. So Bill Hader is basically playing sensitive Barry yep. Uh, yep. as the yep. dentist. Okay. Watch Barry. 
Who who is a little fucking shit that you want to see fail and not get the uh, girl? Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, fuck me. Um, uh, the dude that's uh, he he played Ted Bundy in the new mo- the new movie. Zac Efron. Yeah, Zac Efron. No, he's yes. too hunky. Exactly. That's the whole fucking point. So, oh, we're gonna play dumb Efron. Yeah, yeah, dumb Efron that cannot get laid to save his fucking because life. it could be dumb. What clo- about Simon Pegg? Simon Pegg? Don't, don't get Simon Pegg involved in this. Or then we're, cro- we're crossing coasts now. Is he going to play an American? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got a really bad American accent. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> it's obviously Simon Pegg. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Th- I like this idea. So okay. you're saying we have Eric Andre, yep. who's basically Eric Andre in the <laughs> yeah, movie. Yep. Yeah, he's he's going to he, play Eric Andre. He's straight up Eric Andre, and he's also like doing the Eric Andre show, and then he gets yep. drafted or yes. whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who are at war with? Let's get more. That's too dark. Um, the Australians. <laughs> Fuck it. Sure. Yeah, it's got to be something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it can't just be like you the know, kangaroos have risen up or some shit. Yeah, Iran or yep. Yemen or something. Yeah. yeah. Where we're killing children. Um, who plays? Hospitals. Who plays the uh, the female character? Christine. Hannibal Barris. Hannibal Barris in a wig. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, no. Uh, what about the guy from the Eric Andre show who plays uh, Reese Witherspoon? Oh no, who plays Russell Brand? You know what I'm talking about? Is no, he's don't. like Baba Sure do 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 do. He's okay, like the yeah, foreign guy. Yeah. Um, no, I'm no, just I kidding. Think, I don't think so. Um, oh, uh, uh, fucking uh, what's her name from uh, uh, Parks and Rec? The, Amy Poehler? Not Amy Poehler. No. Aubrey Rashida, Plaza. Rashida Jones. Aubrey, Aubrey, Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. That's good. That's a good yeah. call. Right, and then she can have a quick connection with Chris Pratt when he walks through and says, "Hey, <laughs> hey." I, do you guys? You guys did catch that Brendan Fraser was in the no, movie? No, right? I, I watched a rip on YouTube. So he was. He, I mean, it's, he's still Brendan Fraser. Yeah, it's, he's there. Now he walks through and he goes. He, dude, like, everybody in that movie was a flesh blob. That's what that was. looked like for me. Well, maybe you should. Um, I okay. still have the movie, guys. Plays, I have it for seventy-two hours. Maybe you should watch it tonight. Who's like the 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 badass female uh, instructor? Hmm. Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Oh no, Amy Poehler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Actually, uh, oh, actually, um, well, if we're going to keep, like, with the... Uh, I just want somebody that can yell really good. Like, what about, like, Tiffany Haydish? Like, oh, is- she's on SNL. She goes, you ain't ready. Mm-hmm. She, she's she's strong. She's she's scary. Nope. Next. Um, <laughs> Amy Poehler. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Can you pull it off? Who could be? Who can play like Meryl a, Streep? Meryl oh Street. shit, Meryl, <laughs> Meryl Streep, dude. Oh yeah, dude. Meryl Streep is like a full dominatrix. She's just playing but, her like Devil Wears Prada character. But but, but, but she's been a uh, uh, CGI to be Meryl Streep from Deer Hunter. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> they do the dead guy CGI on her like in Star <laughs> yeah, Wars. Yeah, dude, it's like like super. Uh, uh, what's it called? Fucking uh, clippy Unca- and yeah, weird. Uncanny Valley type yeah, shit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got that. Okay. okay. Well, what other characters you got? Throw them at me. I'm really good at this. Are you? Yeah, dude. No, no. I'm really good at this. I uh, fucking who's the, the, what other characters are who plays movie. the Gaddafi general Gaddafi. <laughs> Uncle Tony, <laughs> Uncle Tony. <laughs> Uncle Tony. <laughs> that's Tony. right we got a role for you Uncle Tony uh, I would I definitely nominate Sasha Baron Cohen for that role uh, that's pretty <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen plays every single Arab person in the movie that, that'd be pretty good <laughs> every single one <laughs> yes just like like duplicate digitally yeah, duplicate yeah. him a thousand times yeah um, okay, so I mean that's our okay. So is is there any change in the plot? Oh, oh, uh, fucking no! There's absolutely none. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, the special forces guy. Who's who's that? Oh, the dick. Yeah. Um, he's got to be a hunk. Got to be a hunk. I'm drawing the line. Chris there. Pratt. Chris Pratt is a hunk, but he's already in the movie oh, because Chris true. Pratt is now is Brendan Fraser. Because Chris, Brendan have Fraser. I said this on the podcast yet? Chris Pratt is today's Brendan Fraser. Yeah, I think so. Brendan Fraser at his height was Chris Pratt. Yeah, I think so. I can get beyond that. Um, Brendan th- Fraser never did anything as good as Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec. But he, that's because he was in the Golden Age of Television. He would never. <laughs> at that time frame, he wouldn't go on television because television is an insult. What's the uh, best movie Brendan Fraser is in? The, the Mummy. Bedazzled. I don't know. I mean, he was, yeah, The Mummy. Bedazzled? The mummy monkey is, bone? The mummy monkey is bone hot is so garbage. Bad. Hey, monkey fuck you. Bone. Fuck you. Monkey bone fuck is you. really bad, but that was actually made by uh, David O. Russell, the man who made Three Kings. Mm. Uh, monkey bone was good, and so no, was the it mummy. It's really no, bad. no. Monkey bone was good, and so was the mummy. You just don't eat enough marijuana edibles. When you Who's eat this? a marijuana edible and go to the city of Hamanoptera and go hang out with fucking Imhotep and Anak Sunamun, you can fucking talk to me you know about what you, what you like think you about the fucking mummy. What? 
A craze. Correct. <laughs> I, 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 damn it. I did not see that. I'm dumb. I didn't sleep this weekend. I was hanging out with my friends. The funny part is Nicole's like, this whole episode is just going to be Andy saying crazy boy over <laughs> crazy and over again. Crazy boy, boys. buddy. Buddy. All right, wait, so so who's who's the special forces guy? Oh, uh, fucking um, Rocket Raccoon. Uh, Bradley, Literally Rocket <laughs> Raccoon. <laughs> just Rocket Not Bradley Raccoon. Cooper. Not Bradley Cooper. Just Rocket Raccoon. Honestly, though, I'm okay with it. I'm with it. I'm with yeah. it. Yeah, man. You got to be inclusive. Did that guy fucking die? No, Did they address that anyone dies in this movie? Nobody died. Nobody nope. died. Not even, not even the Libyans. Nope. They're Nobody all died. good. Missiles didn't actually blow up. Nobody was... Everyone was fine. They were fine. Everybody was fine. <laughs> Nobody dies in war. Nobody yep. dies in war. Everybody's fine. You get to open up an electronic store afterward. You don't have PTSD. You, you get have, a camel. You, you get to, you get to um, marry or date at least your fellow um, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. combatants yep. Yep. Um, who are awarded to you when you find water in the desert. <laughs> yeah, that was a little strange. What a scene. fucking weird scene. It yeah. also, there was no payoff. They just found water and then they're like, everything's good. I'm going to fuck yeah, you. How did they get back from there? They just shot. The, he shot at a snake, missed the snake, which is like, dude. And then sec- and then he kills the snake with his with the butt of his gun. But how do they get from the oasis to the next point in the movie? Because I think I they don't get captured. Remember. Don't is they? That when, that when they get captured? I think that's when they get captured. I don't know. This movie is fucking bad. What about the scene where where uh, Christine tell like graphically describes yep. about covering him? Take off your pants and and cover, cover you in warm oil. oil, and then have the craziest, freakiest sex with you. Yeah. And he was like, "Are you for real?" Uh, what was this movie rated? PG. Uh, P- PG. 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 Parental guidance. Wow. Suggested. How many times did we watch this as a kid? So fucking many times. So many times. Would you watch it again? I just did. Would you watch and it? I, I have would a you, Okay, would you watch it in two months? I watched it less than six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Twist. Wait, what the fuck? I would never watch this movie again. I probably will before <laughs> next year. Chris, I have it for seventy two so more is hours. This, is you this watch your it. biggest like? Is this your biggest guilty pleasure movie? Um, not. Nah, mm, it's up there. What is your? What is a bigger guilty pleasure pleasure movie I'm for you? Racking my brain. <laughs> what about you, Andy? What's your guilty pleasure movie? I don't identify with that term. All pleasures are just pleasures. My what's friend. your pleasure movie? That's <laughs> even worse. <laughs> <laughs> the Mummy, dude. It's the mummy. Okay, that's your guilty pleasure movie. It's not a guilty no. pleasure movie. My, my it's a good movie, movie, and you should watch it. Is uh, uh, Lord of War, Nicolas Cage. That's a good fucking movie. Yeah, we should have watched that. Guys, why do you have me on this show? I'm not. I have no critical eye. <laughs> <laughs> I like everything. I fucking there's nothing. I have not watched a piece of media or listened to music that I haven't liked in. Uh, maybe five to six years. I I love bad late nineties movies. Oh, they're so, so good, dude! So good. Uh, Cruel Intentions. I've, I've never seen, seen that movie. It's I've just seen, so I've just seen bad. I've just seen the kissing scene. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, but girls kiss, dude. It's cool. uh, that's definitely a guilty pleasure movie. Um, any of the bad late nineties like Ooh, horror movies? Troy, Troy. I never oh. saw that. Yeah, I watched Troy or, Ex- or Alexander. Oh yeah, you just They're like, essentially the same. You movie. just like the pit. I just love the pit, man. I love like the '90s teen exploitation movies. Yeah, those are my favorite yeah, guilty yeah. Those pleasures. Are good. Those are good. Oh, like like Scream and shit. Well, Scream's definitely out there, but Scream is like legit in its own way. Oh, it's what's uh, the Cabin in the, the Woods it. did everything Scream did, but better. True, but, true. Yeah. Cabin but Woods still, great. the um, but definitely like I know what you did last summer. Like that's yeah. like some bottom of the barrel stuff right there you got some jennifer love hewitt you got some mm-hmm. star michelle mm-hmm. geller this oh, is yeah. primo 90s um but like you know stuff like can't hardly wait mm-hmm. which is a really weird freaking movie if you've never don't, seen it don't tell yes. mom the the babysitter's, babysitter's dead, dead. yeah uh you have you seen uh you haven't seen can't hardly wait no nah. can't hardly wait is the concept for the movie is we will um we will throw a party and give people characters and just have them improv and we'll put cameras all over the party and like kind of film as it goes out and then we'll edit a movie out of it. Okay. It was like kind of a neat idea for like a student film, but this is supposed to be like a Hollywood production. Eventually they're like, all right, we're just going to do a teen exploitation film that takes place during one house party. And oh, okay. So that's not, that wasn't yeah. like the premise inside of the movie was that they were teen filming No, no, party. that was like really what they were going to do. But the weird part about it is it features 
a, an incredibly abnormally large number of um of famous people before they were famous. Right. So it's like uh, kind of like a freaks and geeks situation. Very similar. Some of the same people actually. Um, but it's like. So you got Seth Green in there. Jennifer Love Hewitt's in there. I've definitely seen the scene where Seth Green's in the bathroom trying to get it, get it on with with. Uh, yep. What's her face? Uh, Jason Segel's in it. Nice. Clea Duvall's in it. Jamie Presley's in it. Um. Selma Blair is in it. Like this okay. is all before these people were anybody knew who the hell any of them were. Jenna Elfman shows up in it. Jerry O'Connell's in it. Melissa Joan Hart's in it. Nice. So it's it's like just a ton of these actors that became really big like two years later. It's like Velvet Underground, dude. It's like it wasn't <laughs> yeah. the greatest band, but every single person that listened to that band started their own band. Oh, and it's a terrible movie, but I just love those shitty like teen exploitation movies from the late nineties. They're much better than the early nineties shitty comedies, which are like in the army now. Fuck you. So let's bring it home here, boys. Um, what was the cast again? Polly Shore. Oh, no, our, our, cast. our cast. Oh, Eric Andre. Eric Andre. Uh, Zach Efron. Zach Efron. Um, or Simon Pegg. We didn't really hammer yeah. that one down. It's Simon Pegg and Zach Efron. They just switch back, they and, switch forth. back and forth. No, it switches nobody... halfway through the movie. And we never say anything. <laughs> it is never we, acknowledged. We couldn't afford Simon Pegg anymore. We yeah. couldn't did you see what Zach they did Efron. in Roseanne with that? No. So in the show Roseanne, which is very underrated by people who never bothered to watch it. Um, yeah. Don't plan on it. One, they have one girl that plays like the, the one daughter. Right. And then she left the show, so they replaced her with a different actress. And then, like, later on in the series, they just started using... They just alternated them, like, every episode. That's awesome. Like, just for shits. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and then they brought both of them back, like, for the new one. <laughs> we actually have two daughters. Yeah. Surprise. Oh, shit. So we'll just do that with uh, with them. Yeah. Because they right. look the same. Yeah. Yeah, they're exactly the same people. Um, and then, I'm not going through the. I can't remember the rest of the cast. Bill My Hader oh, is Bill Hader's, uh, uh, David Allen Greer. Okay. Uh, um, the the Christine character is played by Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza and Amy Poehler. And the Amy Poehler. drill sergeant is Meryl, Meryl Streep, Streep, but she's CGI'd. CGI'd into the dead guy from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Moff Streep. Well, that's how the, that's how they're gonna fuck. <laughs> that's how they're gonna get the fucking Oscar out of this shit. Dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that was everyone's critic. <laughs> Listen, guys. Uh, if you're still listening, thank you for so much for listening. If you uh want to watch. Uh, this movie, <laughs> uh, you can rent it on YouTube.com. Use our promo code EIK. Uh, we don't, that's not how that it's works. It's not how that works. You can but, get the novelization on tape at audible.com. Yeah, I wonder if there's a novelization. I'll what, you need to, what you need to do is you need to rate, review, subscribe. Yeah. We are at EIK Fellows on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Tell your friends, tell your family, you join our Patreon. Yeah, you can go to patreon.com forward slash everyone I know. You can go to audible, audibletrial.com forward slash EIK if you want an audiobook and a free membership and all that bullshit and listen to The Expanse. If um, you see us on the street, throw say what $20 up. at us. Throw coins, throw rocks. Say what up. Give us a sandwich. We will eat it in front of you. No questions asked. <laughs> <laughs> but if you listen seriously, thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Um, and uh, be nice to each other. B B B B B B nice 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 buddy buddy give me one more come on crazy boys, crazy boys. <laughs>